So hopefully you can see my PowerPoint. I can see a few of you on the side. That's great. And um, so today I'm going to talk about, you know, Breaking Busy. I When I wrote Breaking Busy, it's, um, it's one of my um, all-time bestsellers, to be honest with you. I had just, I've come through many transitions myself personally, and I had just knocked on the table <laughs> and I probably won't tell that story, but I just knocked on the sit on the counter in my kitchen and said to my family, I want off. I don't want out, but I want off and off means off the treadmill that I had bought into and was living, but teaching the exact opposite. So I was a full on hypocrite and I just couldn't be as my audiences anymore. And so uh, yeah, I'll, 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 talk, I'll, I'll talk us through that and we're going to do some self-assessments and we're going to do some, you know, some sort of revelations. And so what I'd like you to do is I, for the entire presentation with me for this next now for probably 45, 50 minutes, I want you to stay at the 30,000 foot level, the 30,000 foot level of what's possible level. Even if right now I get it, you are swamped, have been swamped. Uh, when you're asked to, you know, pull from the bucket, there's nothing in the bucket uh, to pull from. And uh, no, I get that. And uh, I got to do this here. I got to show chat. Okay, there it is. Uh, the handout is in the meeting invite. Oh, thank you, Karen, for saying that. Appreciate that. So your handout is in the meeting invite. You, if you have, if you're next to a computer and you can print it, uh, you can, or you can be again. You can just please have a piece of paper. And so what I'd like, to, if, if you have the handout, there is a, the first page I have is a lady. You, I mean, it's, I'm just showing you a piece of paper, but her name is Joanna uh, Quaz, who is 95 years old and still, she's 95 doing that on the parallel bars. I mean, I was a gymnast in university, but uh, I could never, and I was in shape then, ever doing, done that. So this woman, you know, so what I want to, what, what I want you to think, to just write this down it's perplexing questions, so you, you just let it sort of marinate in your head. What would you do if you didn't know you couldn't? Okay, write that down. You don't have to answer it right now. What would you do if you didn't know you couldn't? Now, for most people, actually, the first thought that comes to your mind, which is scary for most people because it's a first thought, and most of us don't want to admit it, um, it's, it's our brains that get in the way. It's our fear that gets in the way. It's, um, you know, will I disappoint others before I'll even disappoint myself? Those kind of questions come in. So again, I want you to stay curious throughout this presentation. So if I say something, uh, push a button on you, trigger something for you, I don't want you just to respond to the button or the trigger. You have to know that all of your treasures are in your triggers. And just get curious and go, hmm, why did that bug me right now? That's a curiosity mindset. Because if we go right to judgment, by the way, when we're in judgment, who are we actually judging? It's ourselves, to be honest with you. One of the harshest things we do to ourselves is make judgment on other people and other things. And really, it's a reflection of where we're at. So I want you to stay, stay, stay curious. And if we want, really want to lead and be... Um, you know, successful and uh, vibrant moving forward, we have to lead more with curiosity and less fear. And that's a conundrum that most of us as human beings, because that's what we are, find ourselves in front of. All right. So stay curious, stay curious. This uh, is a flow chart that was on the back of a Lukey, uh, which is a stationary company a truck that was driving down Highway 97 in Kelowna. When I saw the truck, I went, oh my. And I took a, a picture. I've since pulled this off their website. Um, they've won awards for this marketing, but the flow chart, this is the only flow chart I have the whole presentation. Are you happy? Yes. Great. Keep doing what you're doing. Are you happy? No. And the key to the whole flow chart is, do you want to be happy? And of course, most of you say, yes, yes. Of course I do. That's a stupid question, Linda. Uh, I actually say, you know what? Mm, I don't know if you do. Because if we, most of us wanted to be happier, we'd stop telling the stories that we tell over and over and over and over. And um, if you think about your good friends, you know, people who are your, your peeps, your, your friends who are there, they know you, they know more about you than probably you know about yourself. Um, you both garner secrets on each other. So you have to stay friends, you know, th those kind of friends. What do good friends do for us? 
They tell us the truth when we don't want to hear it. That's what a good friend does for us, right? But what does a really good friend do for us? They tell us when we're no longer cute enough, we've had too much wine, get home. That's what they tell you. So if you've been telling the stories for two weeks, two months, two years, some of us, two decades, it's something that's gnawing at you. If you want to be happy, yes. Do you want to be happy? Yes. Then change something. And so here we are, January 2023. I want you to think about one or two things personally or professionally in your lives that you want to just move the dial slightly on. Okay. Not turning yourself in. I'm not, I've never been a fan of the inside out, you know, driving yourself crazy, trying to change things about yourself. And lots of us right now in January, we're changing things. You know, we're, we're trying to eat more greens. We're, we're trying to move our bodies more at lunch or whatever, you know, and sometimes it lasts and sometimes it doesn't last. Do you want to be happy? Move the dial slightly. Cause if you move the dial slightly in January, 2023, literally by March, by March, three months down the road, you will be in a completely different space than you are right now. And if you don't want to be happy, just keep doing what you're doing. It's pretty simple. I just love that flowchart. Oh, you know what's pretty funny about this flowchart? So I was speaking at, a, it's called the Entrepreneurs Organization. It's a big business group across Canada. And I was speaking at their national conference. And the owner of Lukey <laughs> was in the audience when I showed this picture. I went, oh, that was serendipitous for me. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Anyways. So how are you really doing, considering everything you've got on your plate right now? What is the most common response to the how are you doing question, right? What's the most common response? Well, the most common response is fine, thank you. It's very Canadian. Fine, thank you. Good, fine, thank you. And the reason we say fine or good is because we literally want the conversation to end there. We don't want to get into it. The person who's asked you is just showing good manners. You know, they don't want you to get into it either. And uh, so we just say, fine, thank you. And we move on, right? But really this, the most, like, that's number one. It's been number one for years and years and years. Fine, thank you, good. Um, but the real answer to these days uh, through, especially for you all through COVID and even more now is busy, busy, busy. This is the answer. Holy crap, am I busy? And the reason we say busy, busy, busy is because we get much better feedback when we're busy than when we say, fine, thank you. I mean, you get to hear healthcare heroes. So how do you do it? How do you stand it? It's amazing. And when you're hearing that feedback, what that what is that feedback feeding? It's feeding our egos. And we've come to believe that when we feed our egos, we feel better about ourselves. We feel we think our self-esteem gets built when in fact we have either forgotten or have never learned how to really nourish our, in our souls and our spirits and doing the things that really bring us joy. I mean, this busy trend has probably been on point for probably 15, 20 years. And when I wrote the book, Breaking Busy, I talk about, you know, how did we get here? Like, what is it that turned us into being busy? When did busy become the badge of honor? because it feeds our ego and it's kept and it's brought us into this treadmill of I don't even know what but I know most of you will say unless you're a super grounded disciplined amazing human being most of us are in overwhelm you know distraction overload stressed and so it, you know just literally when I think about my parents our parents weren't busy they were hard working but they weren't busy. My grandparents, your grandparents were not busy, hard, hard working, not busy. And how in one generation did we become, did we become this? I mean, think about it. You know, you got the kids going here, you got the kids going there, you're there in uh, two arts classes and Taekwondo and math club. And, you know, and you're driving, 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 driving. And you're also doing, you know, fundraising, 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 fundraising for your kids, schools or sports, you name it, you're fundraising right? Wow, that's amazing. We pile a whole bunch of stuff on our plates because we have a tough time saying, and oh, nope, I just can't do it right now. Because we feel like we're letting A people down, or, you know, they're going to be so disappointed, they're going to think I'm not a very good person. No, it's actually crap. They're not thinking about you at all, to be honest with you. They're thinking about what they're not doing. That's the truth of the matter. 
So how are you doing considering everything you've got on your plate right now? Now, some of your plates may be fairly empty and some of your plates are going to be so full. And you know why we put so much stuff on our plates? Is because when we have all this stuff on a plate, you can't see past the plate. So you don't actually have to deal with the things in your life that are on the other side of the plate because you've got so much going on. So I don't have to actually deal with that important thing for you in your lives. I mean, when you were a kid, did you grow up and say, oh my gosh, when I get older, I want to be fine. No, nobody did. Nobody did. So we've got to stop saying fine, thank you, and good. And you can say, you know what? Tough day. I'm having a tough day, but you know, I'm getting through it. Just verbalize. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be an essay. Um, if you're having a spectacular day, say you're having a spectacular day. As Canadians, we want we don't want to say that e either because we don't want to sound like we're bragging or we know more than the other person knows because they're not fine. So just notice what you notice about yourself. Notice what you notice about what you're hearing. Notice what you notice and see when it pushes buttons. So after I wrote Breaking Busy, I was asked to do a TED Talk here in the Okanagan. and. Um, Ted, the franchise of Ted, when you do a presentation for them, they, they, you know, I did an application, wrote out what I was going to talk about, and then they come back to me with, uh, Linda, uh, do you think you could do a bit more research on what busyness, distraction, and overwhelm is doing to people, not just Linda Edgecombe's opinion research? I said, okay, <laughs> sure. So I found a researcher, Timothy Wilson, from the University of Virginia, who had done this experiment with his, his students. He wanted to see if you know adults could come into a room with nothing in the room except a table and a chair and just sit there for 20 minutes. Nothing to do, just sit. But he had a box on the table attached to a battery. And if you wanted out of the experiment early, you had to push the button, which gave you a pretty good shock. It didn't hurt, hurt you, but it, I mean, it didn't harm you, but it hurt you. And um, the percentage of people who actually buzzed themselves out early was over 85%. And the only people who actually stayed in the room for the whole 20 were women, probably just taking a nap. You know, they took advantage of that 20. And um, that's another workshop completely. But what he concluded, he said, we'd rather harm ourselves than be alone with our own thoughts. That's how bored we'd become. Because we check and we check and we check and we check and we check. And some of you are checking right now because you can, because your screens aren't off. And I can only see five of you. So the ones that I can't see, you could be checking, checking, doing homework. Oh, don't get me wrong. I get it. Some of you are at work and you got to get up because there's things to do. I get it. But just notice if you're being distracted by this crazy thing, because it's very habitual. It's got us wrapped around its little fingers and it's meant to be wrapped around our little fingers. That's why the people who invented it and all the apps that we that we use um, draw you in. And if you've ever seen, oh gosh, now what's it called? The, the, it's a Netflix movie called, oh my goodness, my brain just went away. Anyways, it's about all the top executives who've worked for the for Apple, Google, Pinterest, um, the, the top execs who have since you know quit the jobs. Um, and they said, if you do nothing else, this favor, do this for yourself for like, try it for a couple of days. I, I love doing experiments. I'm not a big believer in the forever, but a couple of days of just turn every notification off and it gets really quiet, really quick. And you check maybe a third of the amount of times you can still check all the time you want, but you're not going to, because you're not getting any buzz. There's no notifications. It's amazing. So don't let it control you. You take control of it. Second experiment was done by the world, um, it's not an experiment, but a research study done by the World Health Organization at, who were talking about young people today who are probably 17 to 21. So grade 11, 12, first, second year university. That the average young person today, if you have these in your lives, I want you to listen up here because at the time that I read this, I had two in college. The average young person today is experiencing the exact same levels of anxiety as the patients who were admitted to the psych wards back in the 60s. And then it goes on to talk about, you know, where's that energy coming from? And a titch of it is done with their phones and their devices. But the majority of that energy is coming from us, their parents. And so when I read that, I thought, oh, 
because I'm an intense person, not when I'm sick. I've been pretty chillaxed lately, but I'm an intense person. My husband's super driven and we both come in the door at the end of each day and it's like, Arr. and so I know we had to take responsibility for the energy we're bringing into our own house. And that's the truth for you as well. Do a big check on what kind of energy you're bringing in and pressures you're putting on um, your children, and but especially young adults. And we know the stats of first, second year university students. I mean, the suicide rates that, I mean, and I'll, at the very end, I'm going to show you some research uh, that's been done to help students, you know, in the, the important years of their life when they're in school. But I found a couple of, I went looking for, I needed to save some time. I found the Bathe and Brew. It's a shower coffee maker soap dispenser. This is an actual product. I saw it in the mission at a coffee shop. Um, and I thought, look at it, it says, cut your morning routine in half. I thought, wow, what a great, <laughs> what a great device. No, I didn't say, wow, what a great device. But there's some of you thinking, wow, what a great device. <laughs> and the rest of us are going, really? That's, we come, <laughs> you can now take cream with your conditioner. I mean, it's just, <laughs> if you like this device, you're going like, to love the next one. It's the wine rack. Yes, you can now wear, wear the wine rack while you work out, fill it with wine, and you can drink while you're working out. So you don't have to go to the gym and then go to the pub to have an apre workout drink. You can do it all at the same time. And don't worry, gentlemen, there's one called the beer belly. It just holds more volume. And you can take it to your next summer concert or whatever you want to. I know I do have one of these and I can uh, confirm that it does hold an entire bottle of wine. And uh, and when you finish that, you can either refill it up or just blow air back into it and you're right back where you started. It's a beautiful thing. So the opposite of being busy or overwhelmed is feeling more alive. And that's what I really want you to think about. How in 2023 can I feel more, can I get that back, that feeling of being more alive? And yes, this is a personal conversation you need to have with yourself. Because not only do I want you to feel more alive when you're not at work, I really want you to feel alive and energetic when you're at work, right? Home and in our careers. We will spend so much time in our careers. So let's do a quick survey here. I need you to jot down a few numbers and we're going to rate each of these parts of your life out of 10. Zero means not doing so great. In fact, you're not even thinking about it. 10 means you're rocking the Shazba in this part of your life. And so we start with relationships. And even if you, um, I only want to think you to think about sort of the important ones for you, the ones that matter, the ones that um, mean something to you, not the neighbor that you're fighting with because you hardly ever see them, but you don't like them, not that person. The ones that have meaning for you. Because if you, and you're out of 10, you, may, you might be stressed with one, but for the most part, what's the number? <coughs> Excuse me. And if you want to win the long longevity race on the planet, you know, all the blue zones where people live the longest, number one for them is relationships that they maintain throughout their lives. And relationships take maintenance. I'm drinking out of my Glamour cup. It says, um, you can call me Glamour, like mom, but no rules. <laughs> Thank you, ginger tea. Okay, relationships. Next, physical activity. Is moving your body... A consistent for you throughout the year is movement a part of who you are and I don't care what you do whether you're a walker a runner go to the gym um, a cyclist a cold water swimmer uh, whatever it is for you physical moving your body getting more oxygen in your bloodstream moving to your body more often and this one's non-negotiable which I will hit just towards the end of the presentation again so physical activity your careers we will spend two-thirds of our lives in our careers, I guess a lot of years. I mean, you know this, you have nurses who are coming out of retirement, going back to work because it's needed. And they think I can contribute. So they're doing that. Um, but you know, do you love your career? Do you hate your career? Are there, I know there's obviously there's times when it's really stressful. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? That is really important to think about light at the end of the tunnel, or is the tunnel, you're so busy that the time there's no, the lights have been turned off in the tunnel. Um, so where are you at with your career? And then moving to mindfulness, mindfulness slash spirituality, whatever word resonates with you, but how I want you to judge yourself out of 10 on this one is, do you spend any time with yourself, by yourself, just thinking, letting your brain go, like turning off all the noise. And I don't care whether you do this in the bathtub, 
You do it in church. You do it going for a walk in nature. However you do it, maybe you do it in meditation, maybe you do it in prayer. I don't know. But, and this is on purpose, not just because it haphazardly happens. You on purpose intentionally take time for yourself in a day. I used to say in a week just to give people some leverage, but it really does need to be every day. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. And then I'm going to get you to put this in the chat. And for those of you who are speaking for your group, you have you can have a little quick, quick chit chat. I want your totals. Now, don't, you know, whether they're going to be from zero to 40 and everything in between. Um, and you know what? I And I can tell you what they were before COVID, during COVID, and now post-COVID, kind of still in COVID, RSV, all the things that are going on. And, you know, the new one, the new Abercrombie and Finch. Okay, and don't judge your number, by the way. Don't think, oh my gosh, it's low. Oh my gosh, I'm too high. I can't break. No, just put them in. So I'm, I'm just looking at the numbers as they come in. And I'll tell you that, keep doing it because I want to see them. Wow, Karen, rocking the Shazba sister. Okay, um, averages across the board pre-COVID, because I've done this for a long time with my groups, um, are 18, 19 to 21. That's averages across every occupation, organization, profession. Doesn't matter what people are doing for a living, the averages are always in the middle. There's a few people who are low, lower than that, and there's a few people who are higher than that. So far, I've seen probably two, maybe three high 20s and in, in just into the 30s, okay? And so I wanna tell you, people who score high consistently on this little sort of personal audit, that you, I've given you, people who score high consistently have small practices that they do every day and processes that they use every day. People who score high know how they're going to start their day before their feet hit the floor in the morning or whenever your feet hit the floor when you've come off of sleep. Could be in the afternoons. I know some of you work shifts, of course. Um, they, they, they have they take time, whether they make a great cup of coffee, they enjoy it, they might read the news, they might um, whatever, take the dog for a walk, that's always, but it's intentional and it's on purpose. They set themselves up to have the best possible day they could possibly have. They don't just get out of bed and start swinging the racquetball racket, just hitting the ball because that's what you're doing. You're putting out fires every which way. That's what people who don't start their day intentionally tend to do. But they also bookend their day with the, how they unwind the day before their head hits their pillow at night. Whether that's read, take 20 minutes, have a, have a hot bath, you know, again, whatever it is for you, maybe a journal a little bit, whatever it is to unwind. Because when you do that and your head hits a pillow, you have the chance of having the best resilient sleep you possibly can. It's nurturing. And, um, but you also have these processes of how you deal with life when it hits the fan. Because it hits the fan for all of us, sometimes multiple times in a day. You have a dial a friend, you have you go for a walk just to move the energy of that stress. You talk to your mentor or your coach, uh, a colleague who you you can sort of sit, you know, say what's going on because you just need to work some issues out. But they have consistent ways of opening their day, closing their way, and how they deal with life when it hits a fan. Okay, so let's go back to this for a second. I want you to choose one of these areas that needs some time and attention right now. You can't choose all four if all four need attention. I want you to choose the one that you know you'll get the biggest return on your investment for spending some time and energy in this area of your life. And I want you to put that into the chat, please. And I will tell you how what I normally see when we do this. Yes, so you're doing exactly what everybody does. I'm reading, I'm reading. Keep doing it, keep doing it. Okay, one relationship. Yep, yep. By the way, number one before before COVID was physical activity. Number one, and then it was mindfulness. Number one during COVID, just out of interest, was mindfulness and then physical activity. Um Relationships usually gets one or two. I think I've seen now, I've seen three relationships. Um, lots of physical activity is now your strongest, which is current currently what the number one is. Then mindfulness, then relationships. And true, to be honest with you, 
I don't care who I've spoken to, which profession, which careers people are in. If I've seen someone put down your career as the one they want to spend time and energy on, <laughs> that's no one. That's a zero. I know. And we're in the workplace right now. And I'm delivering a presentation for you workers <laughs> in, in interior health. But that is the truth. So you, and here's what I want you to do. If it's physical activity, if it's if it's relationships, or if it's uh, mindfulness, I want you to write down specifically what you will do to put some energy into this one area of your life. And this is a, don't overthink this. If it is tie my shoes on when I'm done here today, I'm going to go for a ten minute walk then that's what it is. And the sooner you do this, because we are only who we are because of our habits, the more it will come to you. So if you do, and you know, we are all creatures of our own habits. If, if you want to do something physically active or you want to do something more mindful, always, always do something on a Monday. Because if we do something on a Monday, we tend to do it on a Wednesday and we maybe even on the weekend twice. If we wait till Monday, if we push it to Wednesday, that gets pushed to the weekend, which actually gets pushed into next week. That's how our habits work. So the truth is, whatever you wrote down here, yeah, getting in my 10,000 steps, good for you, because I'm not anywhere near it right now. <laughs> Yesterday, I didn't even leave the house and never took off my PJs because I was coughing all day. Um, you need to act on what you put down there today. If you have an opportunity, and I know it's dreary and it's cloudy and it's damp, it's not super cold, but it's, you know, it's not, it's not inspiring weather. Let's say that just, it's never, <laughs> the weather's never an issue. It's how you're dressed. That's the issue. And so tie your shoes on. Don't think about, do not think about it and just walk out the door. And if you only have 10 minutes in the tank, you go out for five and come back for five, Right. So that's literally what I'm I'm encouraging you to do. I'm going to I'm going to ask you to do something on a, an accountability uh, point of view to spend any more time riding my horse even in winter. Yes. Awesome. Excellent, Jean. Starting my day off with scripture. But I think I, I grew up very very fundamentalist, not quite that way anymore, but um <laughs> I definitely find inspiration and I find that that really helps me. Okay. Let's move on. See, the only thing that's uh, worse than not feeling fully alive is pretending that you are. So if nothing else, stop pretending. It doesn't have to be the biggest negative thing, but stop pretending. You know that everything's great when it's not, because that energy that you're spending trying to pretend, it, well, A, is exhausting. It's not doing you any good because you're, you've got sort of, you know, brain, you know, warping going on in your mind. So answer, this is my favorite question to ask, ask the whole presentation. I've been asking it for probably 25 years or longer. It's the hallmark question I've asked. It's on all my marketing. Um, when was the last time you did something for the first time? And what you really want to think about here, how old are the stories you keep rehashing with your good friends? You know, oh yeah, I remember summer 78. Well, some of us are summer 78. Some Mine is summer 88. Uh, some of you are 98s and some of you are 08s and some of you are 18s, I know. But what's, you know, the stories. When's the last time you dared yourself, you scared yourself? I mean, truthfully, I am privileged to be able to get on planes, I have for 30 years, and fly somewhere kind of cool and speak at that event. But I don't mean that. I mean, that's a, that's a gift. That's, a, that's, a, that's my career. I mean, when's the last time you really you know, put yourself on the line and did something that was kind of scary for you, even if you were not great at it. You know, whether it's a travel thing, an explore thing, or a polar bear dip. Uh, yeah, that's amazing, actually. I did it this year again. But um, it's so exhilarating to do a cold water swim right now. I know it's crazy, but it is so exhilarating. And that one's easy because, well, most of us, I know you're from all over the different parts of southern bc southern east bc and um some of you don't have access to easily to a lake but i'm telling you <laughs> it's something else um but the truth is when i actually you know started when i knocked on the table and told my family i want off not a, i don't want out i just want off i hadn't really done anything for a long time 
to really push myself. So I'm, t I'm asking people, Hey, when's the last time you did something for the, for the first time? But in, truthfully, I hadn't. And, uh, you know, it's f funny how life kind of hands you out what you need. So literally maybe three, four days later, I'm speaking in Sam and Arm and literally this movie was on TV and I watched the way and I'd never seen it before. I'd never even heard about it before. And if some of you've probably seen it, it's a great movie to watch. It's very inspiring. Martin Sheen, um, is a is a lead in it and Emilio his son wrote it and directed it it's a it's about a walk through southern Spain it's about 800 plus kilometers to walk um and uh and what the movie shows you is actually way more romantic than the actual doing it the movie shows that you can wine taste your way across Spain which you can but uh yeah no it's a bit harder than that and I thought to myself oh my god I can do this and probably some of you on this call have done it or you have friends who've done it, or you've certainly heard about it. So if you want to get inspired, first of all, watch the movie. So I went crazy. I researched everything I could re research about doing this trail. I knew it was going to take me, I don't know, 30, 35 days to do it. Um, I watched every documentary. I mean, I literally, I read every book I could. And the only thing I didn't research is, A, what's the weather like in the month of March? Because that's when I was going. Uh, that is means that it was like unbelievably bad and uh, B how many people walked the Camino during that time that'd be no one and, <laughs> and so I had this crazy experience I had three goals when I did the Camino a I wanted to meet a new friend and I, I did this when I was 55 like how do you meet you know I thought maybe wouldn't it be cool because you commiserate at the end of each day of what you're doing if I could meet a new friend and maybe they're going to be from across the globe well, I never met anybody, so I didn't meet a friend. Number two, I was hoping I'd lose a couple pounds. I didn't lose one, and I'm not even exaggerating, not one. And you'll see why in just a minute. And uh, number three, because my voice in my head, I call her Hag Delinda, and she can be pretty mm, harsh to me sometimes. She's actually pretty quiet right now, but um, I wanted to like myself more. I thought, if I'm doing this for a living, I think i got to like myself more. And so off I went. In southern Spain, actually, I started in southern France and went up and over the Pyrenees Mountains for the first day. It's a beautiful day. It's Europe. It's about 24 degrees. I'm thinking, I can do this. I trained for it. So I knew how to walk up hills with a backpack on. And my backpack was a 65 liter, like ridiculous backpack that was full of anything because I'm a just in case kind of gal. You know, I literally had just in case the sun hit the earth. I had everything you could possibly need to do a hike for 35 days. And it's gorgeous. I mean, I'm going, wow. What I'm not noticing as I'm walking this first day is there's nobody out there. I'm not meeting anybody. Anyway, so I took my first selfie, which turned into the cover of my book. But that first selfie, it kind of looked like I'm standing at a mic and I'm thinking, wow, okay, that's kind of a cool selfie. Look at that stupid big pack. And um, which turned into hundreds of selfies later. But I stayed at my first hostel. I'd never stayed in a hostel in my life. And it was like Ikea. There was a girl's bathroom and a guy's bathroom. Last one the entire trip, by the way. Um, but, and it was, I thought, I can handle these hostels. No problem. Yeah, there weren't anything like that. <laughs> Anyways, only seven ninety to go. And with about four or five days, the wind came in and the snow came in and the rain came in. It was wind, rain, snow, wind, rain, snow, slush wind it was just brutal it was just brutal so the number one reason I never lost a pound is because I was too honest with you part of me pissed off the entire time I was out there I was I was doing the fair Forrest Gump screaming at God kind of mad and uh like I literally was yelling is this all you got like I was ridiculous literally I missed the point completely and when the the trail turned into rivers I'm thinking okay I'm a motivational speaker I need to be grateful for something I'm grateful that I'm wearing Gore-Tex boots, which means they're waterproof, which also means they don't breathe, which means that you tend to lose toenails, your blisters. It's unbelievable. Your feet are just brutal. I end up losing all my toenails, which is super, super uncomfortable and sore. But that's also a blessing. And I was grateful for the fact that the, my feet were a distraction when I got to the, when I'm walking across the prairies in Canada and I can see what eight hours ahead of me looks like and it's straight and it's boring and there's no one there. And I'll be honest with you, my biggest fear as a traveler has always been, where am I going to go to the bathroom? Anywhere I wanted to go to the bathroom because no one knew I was out there. There was no, uh, I didn't need a, I didn't need a tree. I didn't need a bale of hay. I didn't need 
anything, even satellite didn't know I was there. So then I turned to this solution, which was a $1.19 bottle of wine. And uh, yeah, I call it the cheaper therapy approach. Second reason I never lost a pound because wine was pretty damn cheap when you're walking across the wine region of Spain. It's not just $1.19 a bottle. It is free when you walk through Galicia, which is the wine region. And you come out of your hostel in the morning and you're still wet from the day before. And I'm thinking, hell, I'm having wine for breakfast. And my mom, I say, mom, it's not very good when it comes out of the taps. She goes, oh, just add some ginger ale. It's like a sangria. I said, okay, mom. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, anyways, I did call home to my parents. But my, but, excuse me. I'm going to, I know I'm talking fast. I did, um, I call my parents once a week. And now my dad has never been on a computer. Both my parents have since passed away. My dad just a year ago, my mom about five years ago. And um, my dad gets on the phone. Mom goes, oh, your dad's trying to figure out how he finds you on the WW. I go, well, it's, first of all, it's not called the WW, but, you know, show him, mom. You know, anyways, dad gets on the phone. He goes, oh, my God. He goes, you're almost there. You must be so proud. It's going to be a big deal. You're going to have tears in your eyes when you get to the get to the end spot. And I said, dad, it, it is a big deal. And um you know, I said, I have been, uh, he said, and just so you know, I got a map of Spain at the AMA, the Alberta Motor Association, and I've been following you with a ruler. And I went, oh God, not everybody knows what that actually means. But um, so he was following me with the ruler. And I said, it's, it's a big deal, dad. When people, when you get to the cathedral in Santiago, it is like high fives. It is like walk under the rainbow bridge. It is tears. It is hugs. But not for me, because there was nobody there, and it was pouring rain, and isn't that a lovely shot? Uh, so basically what I did is I went and bought another $1.19 bottle of red wine and sat in my dorm and commiserated to myself. And literally the day after I got there, the sun came out. No word of a lie. And I was so ticked off. Missed the point completely. I literally tracked the weather for the next, you know, four or five weeks. And it was solid, nice. I'm like, what? The? Anyway, yeah. But then one of my colleagues had to give me a little shakedown. He says, you know, Linda, I tell all my students this. You do the work first, and then you get the lesson. So all of you are in some work right now. Whether it's work work, whether it's personal work, whether it's family work, you know, um, it's just, it's work. So if you're in some work right now, I want you to, Look at the danger zone on the change cycle. See, the work is the discomfort. It's not easy. It doesn't feel good. The danger zone is when you lean into the mirror. So when you're in discomfort, when you're going through changes and you're going through nonstop changes, we have flipped through changes so much in the last three years. And the outside lost at sea, land on the horizon and the work is how I overlaid our experience with COVID into the change cycle, loss, doubt, and discomfort. And what most of us have done, because we're human, is we have cycled through the first three stages of change over and over and over again. And that's why I got the roller coaster here. That's why we're so exhausted. We don't lean in. And believe me, leaning into the mirror is not always pleasant because you have to be really honest with yourself. I listened to... um an amazing speaker just for Christmas at my own association's conference. And, and he says, you know, he said, and this is like, Ooh. he said, so what lies are you telling yourself? Like that's leaning into the mirror. And so being honest, like getting real. So any of you caught that little video at the front end of this um, in the waiting room today, uh, being real and leaning in is just one of the biggest blessings you could ever give yourself, but it's not easy. It's easy for me to say, and I have leaned into the mirror several times throughout my career, you know, had a bit of a transformation. I'm in one right now uh, because, yeah, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like a sad clown, to be honest with you. All of COVID, I was pretty depressed. I was, there's lots of days I just turtled and I got really used to turtling, just withdrawing, withdrawing, withdrawing. And that became my habit. And so it's, I've really found like I've, and I'm pretty courageous, but I haven't been for a few years. So I kind of lost that spark. If you lean into this discomfort, you'll start having conversations with people you didn't have before. You'll start noticing articles or things that come across your desktop, you know, in your emails that are kind of inspiring. It, just because 
but all the all these things have been there. You just haven't leaned in to actually notice them, which will take you through into discovery, which is a beautiful place to be. And I really want you to think about 2023 as being the year of discovery for yourself. Something different, something new, something that energizes you, whatever that is. It's again moving the dial just slightly. I know I'm laying a lot on you. What work are you in at work? And what work are you in in your home life? So I'm going to run through the seven essentials for resilient living. And resilience, which we all have and need, is not a destination. It is an everyday practice of doing some of these things. So the first one is movement, obviously. Non-negotiable. I don't care what you do. I want you to think every time you choose to take the stairs versus the escalator, the stairs versus the elevator, what you're actually choosing is as I age, do I want to be mobile or not? And mobility is a key to living a long, healthy, you know, full life. Mobility is critical. And I only saw watch my dad, who was not that mobile. Like it was tough, tough to watch. Number two is sleep, the elusive thing called sleep. And you all know the the sleep, you know, the recipe for good sleep. You need to be in a dark room. You got to create that. You need to be in a quiet room. You have to create that. You need to, um, not this is part of the formula, but you deserve it. Good linen. Everybody deserves really good linen. So get that. You you deserve it. Get the best linen you possibly can, right? Uh, oh, and you need to sleep naked, because apparently, according to the you know this the sleep recipe, nakedness. Because if you're wearing a shirt or you're wearing your PJs, they twist around you and they wake you up. To be honest with you, so and then if you sleep naked, maybe. Those three of you that are on the relationship part, maybe you could, uh, who knows what's going to happen. Something may be cool. Anyway, laughter. I love to laugh and I'm, yeah, my head tagged to Linda. I'm going to tell her, I could tell her where to go after I'm finished. I love to laugh. And what's kept me in this business this long is the ability to be crazy on stage. There's laughter everywhere. We were born with an innate desire to laugh. And the more you look for it, the more you find it. The empo- this is a great sign. I saw this. The employee shortage is so bad that now long haired, freaky people can now apply. And uh, for those of you um, who don't remember, it's ni- this song came out in 1972, Five Man Electrical Band. And you're welcome because now it's going to be in your head for the next couple hours. Um, this is not that this is ha- um, funny to you, but I, my husband and I run a charity in Nepal and Canada uh, called Her International. And and we've done a lot of things in and around the Okanagan raising money for this charity. We rescue girls, young girls, six to 12 year olds out of human trafficking, to be honest with you, and put them back in school. And we've been doing this for 15, 16 years now. So when I first went to Nepal with Kev, I saw this power pole and I thought, oh my God, because I am I was speaking to Ontario Hydro when I came home. I thought, they're going to think this is a, you know, a great union shop. <laughs> Anyways, they thought it was funny. But if you think that one's funny, look at this one. I took my sister, Diane, my older sister, my Didi, that's the older sister. And I went, oh my, like, seriously, if your Wi-Fi goes down, we're going, um, yeah, whatever, to get some hot bread. You know, <laughs> you can't. The other thing about Nepal, if you've been to Nepal, you know this, it's craziness. It's mayhem. There's no rules. There's no rules. There's not even suggestions there. But they, if you are ever trek in Nepal, they do advertise hot showers. It's a big deal. For, I've never had hot water once in Nepal. Not once ever. I think they just say she's landed. Turn it off. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this missed it or whatever. So my sister Diane and I walked into a tea house on our way up to base camp at Everest. And this was the menu cover available, hot showers, Wi-Fi, and an STD. I went, oh my gosh, that is a full service kitchen. <laughs> and uh, my sister shushed me because she's more conservative than I am. Shocker. Um, and she said, anyways, this Australian sitting beside me goes, look at love. You can also get an international STD here too. I said, well, you know, I'm getting one. It better be international. <laughs> I said, but I'm noticing that women get more water pressure. It's kind of sexist if you ask me. But anyways, that's funny. I thought that was hilarious. Hung if you love Jesus, text while driving if you want to meet him. You've probably seen that one. And uh, this one was at Grace Baptist Church on Glenmore, staying in bed, shouting, oh, God, is not the same as going to church. Well, I'll tell you that uh, for those of you who may go to that church, um, that did not stay up more than 10 minutes because the neighbors were calling in saying, hey, to the administration in the office, 
uh, it's not what you think it means. <laughs> and I, and I took, stopped, took the picture. And by the time I came back from London Drugs, it was down. <laughs> anyway, clarity. What do you want? What do you really want? Right? Resilience needs clarity to create some space for you to reboot your energy to find peace and happiness. Period. So if you can figure out what you want, then you can start saying no to what you don't want. And, you know, most people go, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, we all know what we want. We just don't want to admit we know what we want. Because if we admit it, we may have to do something about it. So clarity. You got to take some stuff off your plate. So you have space for ideas and creativity and building your energy. All those things can land then. If, the, if your plate is so full, all those ideas and creativity and opportunities will just go to somebody else who's got some space on their plate. That's how it works. I know it sounds woo-woo, but it's not woo-woo. So I'm going to help you get some clarity. So what fuels you? You know, what's your undercurrent of your day? So let's pretend I'm going to ask you three questions um, and just write down the answers to each of these questions I'm going to ask you. Uh, I'm the genie and I grant you one wish. Anything you want. You can only have one wish. You can't wish for more wishes and you can't wish to take someone else's free will away. Meaning if they don't like you, you can't make them. Um, so one wish, anything. I want you to write it down. Don't overthink it. Just write down what, it, what do you want if I grant you one wish? Okay. Number two, you've got the wish, whether it's a gazillion dollars, whether it's a home on the ocean, whether it's traveling the world, whatever it is for you. Um, you have to see yourself having this wish now. It's in your life. What are you doing? How's your life different from what it was, you know, before you got the wish? So see yourself in that. Picture it. Bring context to the wish. Okay. And number three, you have all this stuff. You can see yourself there. What does all that make you feel? What are the emotions attached to you living in this wish? You've got this wish now. What emotions? It could be one or two. And if you have access to your computer, I want you to type in the answer to number three. What 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 emotion is attached to it? Because the answer to the genie question is, I'm the genie. I grant you one wish. What you really want is number three. That's what you really want. Happy and content. Warm and happy. Happy and relaxed. Relaxed. Alive and fulfilled. Yep. Relieved. Happy and gifted. Fulfilled. Living my dream. And, you know, it, th those are, I mean, those are the the most common, mischievously gleeful. Oh, Rebecca, I think we could be friends. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, you know, most people say, they'll say happy, peace, uh, contentment, freedom. Um, there's lots of emotions attached. So here's my challenge to you. Over the next few days, I want you to make decisions that bring you to feel these things more often, okay? Whether it is you go, you read a book, whether you go for a walk, whether you have coffee or drinks with friends, just have a joyous conversation. Um, maybe you look up a course you're thinking, uh, that you're thinking of taking, but do make decisions based on you feeling these emotions more often, because that is what you want. It doesn't come from the money. It doesn't come from where you're living. It doesn't come from the travel. It's intrinsic. And you can have that emotion right now. So it's really important for you to think, okay, what do I want to eat tonight? Um, will that make me feel invigorated? That's somebody's word right now. Mischievously gleeful. Well, geez, I don't know. Is there a good, you know, saucy, uh, saucy club in town you could join? I don't know. I don't know. The questions, okay? So that's that, really that. I want you to think about that. Essential number five, you know, creating spaces to just be, and this is intentionally and on purpose. Whether that is a walk in nature, whether that is a, again soaking in your bathtub, whether that is just writing some things down, 
but creating spaces to just be no agenda. You allow your brain to just, un, you know, free it up, get out, get the details out of it um, and allow ideas to just sort of float in. Okay. Critical, by the way, you'll see when I sum up contribution, giving back. I call this choosing a slice of the planet. All of us need to step up. If you have, maybe some of you are volunteer holics, not you. You need to let some things go if you're a volunteer holic. If you haven't chose a slice of the planet, the, the slice of the planet can be very small and it can be very big. I don't care what it is. Just choose a slice of the planet because as human beings, we become ourselves once we've chosen a slice of the planet. So this is our, our charity, Her International. That's me in Gatawa, which is a small town uh, east of Kathmandu, about 10 hour drive where these girls we've been rescuing for a long time and we put them in school and our schools got so big um, or got so crowded that we went back and started building classroom after classroom after classroom uh, because all these girls were coming out of child labor. And um, anyways, over the last 15 years, how I have my girlfriend, Michelle Bono um, was teaching there. She asked a favor, how I got involved. She asked a favor of me. She said, Linda, if um, I give you a bag of scarves and you take it to your next event, because you're always in front of people, would you sell some scarves? Maybe we can buy a few girls out. Well, hundreds of thousands of scarves later, thousands and thousands of girls later, thousands and thousands of their mothers and mothers groups later, um, it's incredible. We ha we have a trip actually going with, with volunteers. If you're interested, it's coming up soon though. It's March, end of March for a few weeks uh, to actually build some bathrooms at one of the our schools close to this, where this is taken and uh, because they need them. They have 1500 kids and four squat toilets. It's terrible actually. So we're building scars. We bribe our girls with bikes Every year, once they get to grade eight, this is we want them to stay in school. So we bribe them with bikes so they get to finish high school. And because that girls don't do all the chores, girls do all the work. And so that gets them home and gets them back to school and they can get their homework done. That's my daughter Chloe, who just had a baby of her own. She is a child whisperer. And uh, I always say if you want your kids to find out that they have way more in the tank than even they think they do, you take them to a developing country. And if there's no Wi Fi, bonus points. Um, this is one of our volunteer groups where we built some more classrooms and um, uh, we, we usually go once a year and bring volunteers with us and it's an amazing experience and you do work. It is work. It's, you know, it's, you don't have to be, it's not a labor camp, I'll be honest with you, but if you want to just take a break and go play with the kids, you go play with the kids and just watch them and, or whatever, just, you can do what, you don't have to be working all day because you do tend to haul a lot of bricks and it's work. This is our sewing moms who sew all of our products. And um, yeah, it was amazing. These, these ladies, here's what education does. I'm talking numeracy and literacy. These ladies wouldn't have looked you in the eye before we started these programs for the mothers groups. And um, they sewed their own little uniforms. Uh, they're so proud that they, they have this job at, at our, we have a, a vocational center that we built where all the mums groups meet and we do all of our sewing and all of our administration out of this building. Um, and Prince Harry, I know he's in the news a lot right now. He was in Nepal when Diane and I were there. And I said, wouldn't it be great if he came to uh, Unico House, our, our vocational center and, and bought a scarf? And yeah, she says, yeah. I said, he wasn't there. It was a, we Photoshopped him in. <laughs> but you know, I have friends who still think he was there. I don't have the heart to tell them that he wasn't. And we Photoshopped him in. But my Facebook blew up. That was pretty cool. And uh, anyways, the sewing moms. And I know that we say, you know, in the word empowerment far too often. Uh, but it is the truth. Education is the only way we'll ever eradicate poverty on the planet. And that's how powerful it is. These mothers now, I mean, I'm talking thousands of them have their own microcredit, open their own businesses. There's way less domestic violence because they support each other, seriously support each other. And um, it's amazing to see. So whenever you think, can I have an effect? You absolutely can have an effect. And we say that we're a small charity, but we're mighty. Um, and you know, what? I, I, I did not know what I was getting into when I started selling scarves. See, I'm really not a motivational speaker. I'm a scarf sales lady with a long sales pitch. That's really what I, I do for a living. Um, practice gratitude uh, daily. So are you happy and do you want to be happy? 
I want you to introduce, I, I could have just started here, introducing to Dr. Lori Santos from Yale. Um, look her up. She's got some free courses that you can take from her called Psychology and the Good Life. When she started this, she was doing it to, to support first year students. And she got so many students in her first class. She had to move it to the biggest theater they had on campus. Um, and all these students joined. So she's been doing research around, you know, mental health and keeping first and second year students um, as w healthy and positive as possible. And this is the, um, this is seriously as simple as it get as it gets. What happy people do that unhappy people don't do. And this is consistently, they carve time for themselves every day. They schedule it. They don't wait for it to happen. They carve it. So that carve can be in the morning. That carve can be in the evening, wherever you can carve time for yourself daily. And just, you know, drop all the chatter in your in your brain. Think about it. Write down things that you're grateful for. And it's not even the thing that you're grateful for. It's searching for the thing that you're grateful for. That when you get the endorphins and the chemicals, the happy chemicals into your brain, which makes you feel better. But you need reminders. So put a sticky note somewhere around your computer. And they do kind things for others daily. Gestures. Hold the door. Bring someone a coffee. Send them a, a quick, hey, how... Hope you're having a great day. Just I'm thinking about you. That's as simple as it is. And that's research based. Mental health based is if you could do any or all of these outside in nature. And the key is 20 minutes. Green space. We have lots of green space around us. We are blessed with a province that has a ton of places to be in nature. And your mental health goes through the roof if we can move our bodies in nature. So where do you start when you're in a state of overwhelm? Yeah, you just start. It's okay, Stan, just pick one flower, start there. Pick your desk, start there. Pick your purse, start there. Pick a box, pick your junk drawer, tie on your shoes, just start anything because the mass, massive um, part of the of the globe, we start, start nothing. We all just sort of stay right here, flat line. That's fine. Fine is the flat line, fine is a great excuse not to do anything differently, just flatline. It's not bad, but it's not great. It's fine. And no one grew up thinking, when I get older, I want to be fine. So literally just start any way and let physics take over, which is inertia, which it will. And I'm going to end with this because this is my goal. You know, 2023 is a year of courage for me. And so I just want for those of you who may be like me, who have turtled a bit in the last few years, um, let's be more courageous this year. Let's try some new things, create some new stories and uh, let that revitalize you and, and bring that spark and energy to work so that you can deal with the crazy workloads. I get it. You've lots on your plates, um, but if you're not healthy, it, it just doesn't work. So there you go. Now, I don't know if BK's on here. She can, if she's on here, she could unmute herself. If not, what I will tell you about is that on Friday, you're gonna be uh, sent an email with a link and a password to my online course called The Resilient Organization and the people who work there, I would say in the humans who work there. And it's an eight module course. Um, it's a gift to you from your uh, leadership as they've paid for it. And um, uh, you can take each module as it comes, like one module a week, or you can do all the modules you want. You can start in the middle and you can start at the end. doesn't matter. You can pick and choose which modules you want to get into. It's um, And by the way, we're sending out four different passcodes and because they're going to four different um, departments or four different locations on, in, in, where um, your, your department is located across southeastern BC. Um, and it's very clear. And if need be, I will. Uh, I, ha I was hoping to have BK on here, but she must have got busy with her other job. <laughs> she has another job. She's my tech and she really understands this stuff. But um, yeah, you're going to enjoy. I'd love to get your feedback on it and, um, you know, do one or do all or yeah, just they don't take long. It's a video and some homework. There's a gr very detailed handbook that you can download or it's it's edible or is it audible edible that you can type on it yourself and just keep it online if you don't want to print the pages. So all that's there for you. So let's be courageous this year. Thank you.
for joining me and uh, stepping up.